Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Carbone. I'm the director of the South Brunswick Public Library. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today, the Friends Concert Series welcomes flutist Lisa Hansen and violinist Dylan Helm, who are also both accomplished on the piano, here to the South Brunswick Public Library virtual stage. This event, like almost all library programs, is sponsored by the Friends of SBPL. For information about the Friends and becoming a member for 2022, please visit our website, www.sbpl.info, select the About Us tab and click on Friends. The Friends look forward also to their next book sale in, in February. In addition to the Friends support, grant funding has been provided by the Middlesex County Board of Chosen Freeholders through a grant award from the Middlesex County Cultural and Arts Trust Fund. Today, we are honored to have acclaimed flutist Lisa Hansen and award-winning violinist Dylan Helm present an engaging duo recital that spans the 17th century to the present. If you have any questions for Lisa and Dylan, please type them into the Q&A. They will address as many as they can at the end of the program. Lisa Hansen, a graduate of the Juilliard School, is winner of the New York Flute Club competition and was featured in the Emmy award-winning CBS TV documentary, Juilliard and Beyond, A Life in Music. She has served as principal flutist for the Mexico City Philharmonic, has recorded with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, the New York Scandia Symphony, and is solo flutist with the Grammy-nominated North-South Consonance Ensemble. She also performs with All Seasons Chamber Players and is flute professor and concert artist at Kane University. Rising young violinist Dylan Hamm attends the Juilliard School, is a recipient of the Dorothy DeLay Scholarship, and has won first prize at numerous young artists and violin competitions. This past summer, Dylan performed with Carnegie Hall's National Youth Orchestra. He's been featured on NBC's Today Show at the age of 11, performing with violinist Joshua Bell, and made his concerto debut at age 12 with David Gilbert and the Bergen Philharmonic Orchestra. Also an accomplished singer, Dylan debuted with the New York Philharmonica at age eight, and is a former member of Metropolitan Opera's Children's Chorus. It is my pleasure to turn the stage over to Lisa and Dylan. Welcome. Thank you so much. We are delighted to be here. We want to thank um, the Friends of South Brunswick Library for presenting us and the library itself. And, and most of all, thank Chris Carbone for all his work behind the scenes to make this concert possible. So as he mentioned, we're going to play a program that spans uh, the Baroque era to the present day. And we're going to sort of go chronologically and skip around from different countries in Europe and then move over to the Americas. So we're starting with three pieces by Bach um, back in the Baroque era in Germany, but actually only one of them is by the most famous Bach, Johann Sebastian, and the other two are by two of his sons. So Bach had 20 children, four of whom became very well-known composers. And we will start with his eldest son, W.F. Bach, Wilhelm Friedrich Bach, with a presto for um, two flutes, but in this case, flute and violin. is by Bach's uh, fifth child and his second son, Carl Philip Emanuel Bach. 
and he wrote this when he was in Hamburg in 1786, and aptly enough, it's named the Hamburg Sonata. And we are going to play the first movement, which is an allegretto, and now Dylan will be on the keyboard. for violin, um, and this is from the C major sonata, um, it is the third movement, the largo.
the next set of pieces that we'll be doing are by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, um, who was a composer from Austria. Um, the first two selections are arrangements from his famous opera, The Magic Flute. Um, the first one is Papageno's aria, in which Papageno, who is a bird catcher, um, catches birds with his famous refrain solo. And in this aria, he's describing how he has no wife or girlfriend and is complaining about that. So, giving her a dagger for it and threatening to disown her if she does not.
from the Mozart group is his sonata in E minor. Um, this happens to be the only sonata that he ever wrote primarily in a minor key, in a in a minor key, not in A minor. Uh, it's an E minor, but it's the only key that he ever wrote in a minor key, um, and it was right after his mother had passed away, so there's certainly some correlation between that. And this is in two movements. <laughs>
Bravo, Dylan. That was beautiful. So we are now going to move over to France and do a group of pieces by some French composers. Uh, the first by Claude Debussy. And this is a piece um, from a set of pieces he wrote for solo piano called The Children's Corner. He wrote it for his daughter, whose name was Emma, but she was called Chow Chow. And this particular um, movement is the first in the set, and it is called Dr. Gratis and Parnassum. And it was supposed to be kind of like a um, an exercise, but it really is a very beautiful piece. And, and many of you may um, associate Debussy with the Impressionists painters, the Monet, water lilies, and so on. He lived from 1862 to 1918. So this now, we are now moving beyond the classical era. We're into the sort of end of the Romantic era, the Impressionists now. And this piece is, again, from the children's corner, the first selection from it, from the suite. Going back to the flute. Our next French piece is by a, an equally magnificent composer, but lesser known than Debussy. Her name is Lily Boulanger. And in fact, her uh, sister, Nadia Boulanger, is, has been more famous until recently because she was a great composition teacher in the 20th century and she taught many. Um, of the famous composers like Aaron Copeland, actually someone we're going to play a little later in the program. She was his teacher, but I'll tell you about that a little later. So this is a nocturne by Lily Boulanger. Um, sadly, she only lived to be 24 years old from 1893 till 1918. Uh, she died, you know, at 24, um, but before that, she packed a lot into her very short life and she was ill much of the time. She won the Prix de Rome, which was the greatest composition prize. She was the first woman to win it ever and she was the youngest um, person ever to win it. So this piece was written just a couple of years before. She was a teenager when she wrote Nocturne.
So Nocturne by Lily Boulanger. lost her so young, but she still left behind beautiful, great works, Lily Boulanger. And our last French piece is um, by a composer named Benjamin Godard, who was actually a violinist also. And he lived from 1849 to 1895. And his style is very much that salon music, the lighter sort of belle epoque turn of the century um, style. And this piece is Allegretto. It's from a set of three pieces called Trois Morceaux. Thank you. 
that we'll be doing is by yet another Austrian composer, but who lived much later. Um, his name is Eric Wolfgang, again, the Wolfgang uh, Korngold, Wolfgang like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Um, and this is his violin concerto, the first movement specifically. Um, he wrote many film scores, so you'll hear elements of, um, you know, very, I don't know, passionate. very passionate and um, magical Almost moments. Almost cinematic yes. kind of landscape. So this is the first movement of his violin concerto.
see that he wrote for a film in the beautiful dramatic, you can almost picture a whole tapestry of images during that beautiful, beautiful piece. Bravo, Dylan. So now we're going to um, move to the Americas and play a group of pieces from both North, Central, and South America. And I love to play music of today that has been written in my lifetime, along with the greats from the past. So I am delighted to introduce a piece by a composer that Dylan and I both know from a music festival that we've done for a number of years called Berkshire Summer Music. And this is a piece by a current composer. Her name is Sanchi Babro. And she's a violinist. She teaches at School for Strings, but she also um, is a very, very talented, wonderful composer with a unique, distinctive voice. And uh, she sent me this piece that she had written just several decades ago for um, a, a production of um, Our Town by Thornton Wilder. And this was incidental music that was supposed to accompany the narrator's opening monologue. And, um, but she reworked it as a concert piece and it's very beautiful. And the title is Between Dusk and Dawn in Our Town, again by Sanchi Abro. Between Dusk and Dawn in Our Town by Sanchi Babro. And like Korngold, she's written for film and theater 
and crosses back and forth from the concert stage to music that is used in other media. And um, many 20th and 21st century composers do this. Of course, Mozart, Bach, <laughs> Debussy, they didn't have that option. But maybe we'll see Sanchi's music in as a film score or a play that you happen to see. You may hear her in the future. Very gifted composer. So, Vilma is now going to introduce a group of Mexican pieces that we're going to play. Yes, so these are two pieces by uh, Ponce, uh, Manuel Ponce. Um, he lived from 1882 to 1948. He was a Mexican composer. And the two pieces that we have chosen by him are Estrellita, sorry, Estre, Estrellita, which in Spanish means little star, and Pajarito, which in Spanish means little bird. Um, so if you hear Ito or Ita, that normally means little something. Um, so the first one, Estrellita, is for violin and piano, and the second one is for flute and piano. but actually Ponce wrote that melody. Now, Pajarito, Little Bird. Ponce. 
And now we are going to do um, a piece by another living composer whom I know quite well and Dylan knows fairly well, um, a great uh, Mexican composer named Max Lifshitz, who came to the US uh, to study at Juilliard and Harvard in the 1960s. And for me, having lived in Mexico, I felt passionately in love with um, Latin American, you know, Mexican, Latin American, South American music as well as Spanish music. And when I returned to the United States, I really wanted to keep that connection alive. So I actually joined um, an ensemble that Max Lifshitz runs called North South Continents. And I've played with him and this group for many years. Um, and I'm very privileged to have premiered works and to have had Max actually write pieces for me. So the next piece we are going to play is um, a movement. We're gonna do two movements from a piece called Mosaico Latino Americano, which means Latin American mosaic or mosaic. And it takes um, themes from all different uh, countries in South America, Central America, and weaves them into this beautiful tapestry. So the first one we're gonna do is uh, Yara V. And that is a very um, slow, um, beautiful kind of lament. It's for someone who's departed. And uh, to get the, it's, it's from the Andean tradition like in Bolivia um, or Peru. And uh, to get the feeling of that folkloric sound, um, the, to evoke the grief and remembrance that these folk instruments can do, um, Max actually chose to write it for alto flute. So I will be playing alto flute, which has a more mellow sort of breathy sound. And it's, as you can see, looks like my flute grew. It's longer and it goes lower. And can uh, I get in there? And it has a very different quality, a different timbre, and you'll hear it used in jazz sometimes as well. Thank you. 
So the next movement of Mosaico, that was the third movement out of five. We're going to do one more movement, the fourth movement, which is called Havana Dreams. And it's actually a tango. And people often associate tangos with Argentina, and they are very, very um, prominent dance form, music style in Argentina. And we will actually do an Argentine tango. We're going to do a group of three tangos. We're almost at the end of the program. But first, we're going to do Havana Dreams by our Mexican um, colleague, Max Lifshitz, evoking Havana and sort of the habanero, which is a Cuban dance from Havana.
next tango from the United States, and then we will conclude our tangos in Argentina. Yes, so the next piece is a um, tango from the Four Souvenirs by an American composer named Paul, Sch Paul Schoenfield. Sorry. Um, this is the slow movement of the set, and yes, I hope you Entitled enjoy. tango. Yes. Argentine composer now. This is by Astor Piazzolla, 
um, the great, great tango composer who created his own new style called Nuevo Tango. He studied with Nadia Boulanger, Lily's sister, her older sister, the composition teacher, who told him, stop trying to write like everybody else, like Stravinsky and all these other people. He was a 20th century composer and find your own style. And he had always loved the tango style, but he tried to separate his classical and, and more popular um, types of playing. He played the accordion, the bandoneon, and uh, loved it. But anyhow, so after that, he threw away all the music he had written up till then and created music based on his passion of tango. So we're going to play Tango A2 number three, and it's originally for solo flute. But Dylan, I asked him if he could turn it into an ensemble piece. So he wrote a wonderful version of it where he added three string parts. And if you'd like to hear that, you can go to my YouTube channel, Lisa Hansen Flutist, or Dylan's, Dylan Hom, violinist, and you can hear the version with four um, players. And we may actually be doing it um, in 2022 with more people, so stay tuned for that. But this is a duo version. It's, it's part of the um, strings that he added. Let me grab my flute. And again, this is, you'll hear Dylan has sort of created the accordion effect. You'll hear these sort of swells throughout. <laughs>
And again, that was Tango Number no. 3 by Astor Piazzolla, turned into a duo by Dylan. I want to come back in my next life as a tango dancer. <laughs> so um, our final piece is going to return us back to the turn of the century and the U.S., the uh, great king of ragtime, Scott Joplin, who was born um, to a former slave from North Carolina. His father and his mother was a freed um, woman from Kentucky. And um, rags were born from the African-American tradition and they're very jazzy, syncopated pieces. This is one of his, he, Scott Joplin wrote over a hundred rags. He wrote a rag ballet. He wrote two ragtime operas. This is one of his very famous ones. The Entertainer, if you've seen the movie, The Sting, uh, it's featured in the um, soundtrack quite prominently. And we want to thank, again, the friends of the South Brunswick Library for, for presenting us in this wonderful series. And we want to thank Chris Carbone for all his work as the director of the library. We hope you've enjoyed it.